this week on Hermitcraft. It's Wolfgang! It's this one! It's going! And on that day, the karma of Rendog's Season 6 Hippie Revolution finally caught up to him. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixelriffs, our writer is LoyXP, captions on this video were provided by Liara, and this week brings the long-awaited showdown between mechanical marvels cooked up by both sides of the Buttercup's perimeter conflict. It's Robot Wars without the remote controls, it's Rock'em Sock'em robots played at 0.1 times speed, it's Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines without the gratuitous nudity, but will it be back? There's only one way to find out, and that's to take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting a step back from the giant robot shenanigans with XB Crafted, who is above it all, at least physically. Because despite the lap time contest now being over, False Symmetry's Elytra course is still open to people who just want to goof around, and XB Crafted knows one goof who's always up for a friendly competition. Well, you've done it, I have not done it, and also, I do have that a sounds like a you problem. I'm left handed. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying how it is. If you want to go in here just cheating your way through the, the, the victory, you, it's all up to you. After bashing their heads on the rings and figuring out in which order they're actually supposed to be flown through, they get real spammy with the rockets and real heavy on the banter. XB is technically the victor, but we all know the real winner here is the server's various firework rocket shops. Ooh. Aha! I saw I, that. I, was, I, 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 I saw crossed the line. <laughs> I crossed the line. I did cross the line. The in flight entertainment is getting to watch False progressively improve her base. Stream after stream is poured into finishing the Mountain Peak Castle, and there is no end in sight, thankfully. But to catch us up on all the tweaks, False actually provides her own Hermitcraft recap esque segment of all the things she made look nicer across the palace. We're just adding the piano music and letting it play out, really. I built up a whole extra tower section to the side of my train tracks and built out the interior ready for a small seating area. Oh, and I did in fact build myself a small auto sheep pen ready to try and complete my St. Jude map a little bit later on. While False is doing our job for us, Azumavoid has helped her with hers and left a camel pen as part of his Camel Dash minigame. That goes really well, as you can guess from False's video being titled The Most Difficult Mob Ever. But after a few attempts and some cub fan coaching, False earns her own baby camel that soon joins the slowest horse on the server in the stable of things awful to ride on. You've got a friend! Ah, Have you ever seen such a perfect couple? They're just too cute together. They're just too cute. False isn't the only one being put through her paces by a camel. In what's technically a flashback episode to the early days of Hermitcraft in 1.20, Joe Hills is part of the group that discovers a camel in a distant village as soon as the Trails and Tales update arrives. By distant, we mean upwards of 10,000 blocks from Spawn Town. So naturally, Joe's first instinct is to cut down on the travel distance by going through the nether. And naturally, the portal from this village takes him to a basalt delta. Okay, this is not the safest area for a camp. <gasps> How did you... you were down there? Well, despite the help from the locals, we're still making progress. With only a villager and some iron golems for company, he digs a staircase to a safe tunnel height in the nether ceiling. Safe, of course, aside from the magma cubes. Eventually, Joe finds his way back to civilization and is able to ride the camel all the way through hell and back to spawn, where he decides the best place for the first camel on the server will probably be Cub Fan's museum, although there was another plot twist in store for him when he got there. As we clear the trees, the beautiful museum district opens before us. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to put the camel over here. What? What is this? Is this a second camel? Hilariously, Cubs Exhibit welcomes an even worse mode of transportation as Pigzel Riffs joins the historic animal pen. The last remaining name pigged, I believe, from the pulled pork advancement, and that, of course, this is the last remaining one, so let's go, Pigzel Riffs. We got a museum to put you in, my friend. A new gem on the hostile monster part of the museum is the practical installation of the Wither Boss projectile. It took some doing, but through a lot of slime block pushing, Cub has successfully nudged one of the frozen Wither Skull floaties into the museum facility. 
but just having the skull on display was too simple, and Cubfan comes up with a contraption essentially playing death tennis with itself as it bounces the smoking skull back and forth using redstone. Another questionable interactivity is the secret passage leading to the museum gift shop basement, an area you certainly do not want to keep secret if you ever wish to get any sales. As promised, the shirts and horns being sold for those willing to extend the history of the ancient objects onto their own personal vase. But the most curious is the library section where one sign distinctly reads decked out blueprints, which certainly Tango is changing too rapidly to ever write anything down. The Diamond Pillar Saga. Hawkeye flies again, perhaps an autobiography. We got the Joe Hills Poetry Corner. I'd really like Hermits to come here and, and author some books for sale, you know? That would be a fantastic. This week, the ever-expanding set of Decked Out 2 features hits a fresh batch, as the mod used for applying custom music to discs and horns gains the ability to assign the block radius across which the music can be heard. Because now we can do things like, like, like 100. Boom, and now everyone Shut up! within 100 blocks would have just heard that sound. This does not stop at just B-dubs being able to scream shut up across the server. Tango actually develops sounds and sound effects custom for the decked out levels, significantly expanding the ambience and atmosphere of the dungeon. So breathe it in before you get chucked out by wardens, of course. Because at this point, the boss mobs of the final level are queuing up to play. Tango actually built a full-on warden farm at a remote ancient city, the key difference being that instead of killing the beasts, the farm shoves them into a nether portal and then into a lengthy tunnel leading back to Decked Out. The redstone systems may not be quite ready for the monsters to be let loose, but it helps to have them Chekhov's gunned for later. Well, on the bright side, getting wardens into Decked Out seems to work just fine. Here he comes. I just, <laughs> I just need to wait for them to despawn now. As if sensing the invisible threat, Grian puts his best effort into the segment of Decked Out he'd promised to build for Tango. His part is a mad scientist laboratory, where once someone has been assembling iron golems until they went insane and decided to build a full-on roguelike game in survival Minecraft or something. This side, like I said, was absolutely fine. This one wasn't quite happy with it. If you're ever having trouble with a build and you're not quite sure, you're not, just sleep on it. Sleep on it, come back the next day with a fresh brain and you, you know you're going to be able to do it. Maybe it's this decorating mood that got him on track to put a giant live, laugh, love sign at the side of Doc M's perimeter wall. Really ties the hole in the ground together, that one. But at least I've now actually contributed to this whole buttercup operation. Funnily enough, Good Times with Scar just wants to outsource the finer detailing of his respective base to somebody else. Having scooped every diamond from every single shop he owns, Scar can actually afford to payroll Pearlescent Moon's work on cleaning up the many dragon eggs across the Scarland Park, as well as a few redstoners to work on the rides for it. You can, you can, you can have it for your office. Trailer. My own, I get an office as well. All right, you, you can build you your own yourself. office, or I can build it, <laughs> however you please. Oh. Now I am confiscating these eggs because they are a legal property on the server. Oh, it's okay. It's I already allowed. have a stack or two. First, of course, he has to make the garage for them to sign up at. Clearing out a significant backstage for the future personnel, as well as the many vehicles waiting their turn on the park's railway. Now, I have a question. Should this position be permanent or is it job based? For instance, if we need turnstiles, a hermit can choose to do that. Or if a hermit wants to do the firework launchers, they could do that. Also, and this is a minor note, but Scar, what are you wearing? Scar, no, this is how Afton died. But talking about murderous animatronics, I guess it's as good a time as any to get into the main event of the week, Buttercups vs. Perimeter, the Robot Wars episode. At least one third of the Buttercup Collective has had success with a machine this week. Mumbo manages to catch his own button in the purple zone, claiming himself a purple crown and a handful of diamond blocks, and presumably becoming his own best friend in the process. This is self-care on a level we can't even conceive. His other machine is pretty successful too. Given the task of building a weapon to surpass Metal Gear, he redstones together a walking bouquet of buttercups designed to deliver a TNT payload straight to the face of Doc M's robotic goat. That looks balanced. Everything looks correct here. Apart from this. What are you? Why won't you leave me alone? Can our robot actually destroy them? <laughs> yes, it can! He then goes back to building his base, not at all afraid about it being blown up a second time, and shrugging off the fact that it's still full of dragon eggs. To be fair, I could clean my room but instead I'm going to build a fortress is probably the mindset of most Minecraft players. 
At this point, said fortress is getting taller than Grian's base, so expect another Hermitville build-off if Mumbo makes a big deal of it. But in the meantime, Grian encourages him not only to not build the back, but also to consider not building the sides either. Yes? Are you, are you done? Because you could leave it, you could leave it right there, and it, it, it could be done. That looks pretty cool to me. Yeah, from one angle. We can't all build bases like you, buddy. Where is Scar? We're meant to be having a meeting. Throughout all of this, Rendog decides the best way to undermine the Buttercup's plans is to literally mine under them. But he doesn't want it to just be a hole in the ground. That's far too pedestrian for his more refined tastes. Instead, Agent 007 builds an undiscoverable spy bunker, which it's fine for us to tell you about because it was discovered pretty quickly. What are we doing here? What is this? Okay. Is this a thing that explodes? No, Should this is a spy thing. The, the official name of it is the Discombobulator 9000. But the hidden door was quite innovative, allowing secret agents to activate the entrance while also getting a much needed snack break also giving him and his new spice suit a surprising amount of camouflage. But Ren has some different camouflage in mind, because in the event that his undiscoverable bunker was in fact discoverable, he decides to create an underground habitat for sniffers, and to disguise himself and Doc M77 as a single sniffer through creative use of Minecraft skins. Um, hold on, so if, if you crouch and look down, do you look like a sniffer's rump? It's gonna work, dude! It's gonna work! If we come to the corner over here of where this mushroom is, they'll never know. Naturally, he makes himself the front half and Doc the back half, and the juvenile part of our brains has to wonder if that has anything to do with him nicknaming this place the Sniffer Hole. Doc M is living and probably loving, but he's definitely not laughing. Oh my god, look at it. What did they do? There's a flower pot and there's cozy lettering. This is the worst. How dare they? Ed Ren's spy base and the pantomime sniffer routine are a little unorthodox for him, but at least they're not written in 20 meter high cursive letters on the side of his perimeter. And the sniffer hole almost allows them to eavesdrop on the buttercup's plans, except Doc can't contain his rage when he overhears them planning to add more yuppie Etsy projects to the walls of his base. A tapestry? Um, a tapestry yeah. background, like it's in bordered? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no! Yeah. Uh, no! Ah, no! Ah, no! You stop! Oh no. I see some quotes. Uh, You're oh, not see, gonna build any more motivational here. quotes on my walls. Why did you need a disguise if your base is hidden? That just seems like strange extra steps. Uh, Naturally, this blows their carefully crafted cover, so we're left with a pair of guys in sniffer onesies and a trio of hippies declaring war and settling things with giant robots at a hundred paces. Grian has set up a giant piece of pottery with a wall of falling concrete to reveal Mumbo's buttercup of destruction, and we think it's pretty funny that he made a garage door out of the blocks that were insta-crashing him last week. But the technical problems don't stop there, because the machine stalls halfway thanks to some complications with the voice chat mod. Once it's jump-started though, the head-on collision we were all hoping for happens, and it goes about as well as you'd expect. Come on! Yes, come, come on! on. Come yes. on, yes. It's igniting! It's ignited! Oh yeah! yeah. Oh, <laughs> <God. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> but the perimeter team had what the buttercups lacked, a phase two of their plans, launching the butterflies overhead and nearly dropping TNT on Scar and Grian's bases. The trio scrambles to block this threat, and even more of the goat robot gets blown up in the process. What are you your incompetence is the strongest power! <laughs> yep. After all of that, Doc still considers himself the winner, but we've got to wonder if the server hasn't seen its last robot face-off. <sighs> Oh, I'm never gonna wear that stupid sniffer onesie ever again. But all the while, perhaps the real doomsday device has been hidden in plain sight. As you see, finally, there's Zedaf. Though putting netherite gear onto a set of leather armor is crime enough, the real offense to anyone with an ear is the cacophony machine Mark II Zed installs at the so very community district where, you know, people live. The trick here is to rig 16 music discs to all play at once, and thanks to the latest in Minecraft updates, you can! The vanilla jukeboxes actually have redstone capabilities now, and even if it's a little different from how the data pack they used does it, ZF is able to engineer a fully automated redstone jukebox with an on-demand off button, thank god. Well, at least he doesn't luck out into the pig step disc, so no use running the Noisemaker 3000 just yet. Oh no, Rendog, what are you doing? Put the pig step back! Don't let him have it! No! Ha! Oh my god! <laughs>
I don't think I've ever experienced that emotion in real life before. I think it would take something very serious to be consumed to go back to where I've just been. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.